Hello, beautiful souls. Kathleen here. How are you doing? Hopefully this live stream is up and working. Sometimes it just, it hesitates a bit. But anyway, I wanted to pop in here and talk about a few things. And um, there was a comment about groups. And I want to say, be careful with groups. Not that I'm just promoting my own group here, but I've been in other groups. I understand mindset. I understand healing. I do healing work. And some groups, they just seem to swirl around and keep themselves stuck in this trauma bond through this whole victimhood. It's like they're staying at that low-level energy of still being abused or you know saying bad things about themselves and other people supporting them on being a victim and that's something we that's the first thing we want to get out of is we want to step into our power and that's my focus is to help you stand in your power and not be a victim but as i posted before about being your own rescue I think that was yesterday but being our own rescue so some groups they seem to just keep staying stuck in this trauma bond victimhood mode and it's not healing at all if we keep ruminating and ruminating and ruminating yes then we can make ourselves physically ill you know it's going to affect us mentally it's going to affect us emotionally it's going to affect us physically so my focus again is around the empowerment aspect of getting you into your power and out of ruminating and out of feeling bad about yourself and out of beating yourself up and all of that negativity because that's what causes dis-ease that's what causes us to feel sick causing IBS keeping us swirling in our PTSD. Hey, my dad was a World War II veteran who spent his life being stuck in his PTSD. So in certain groups, we just want to be careful about, and that's why I don't necessarily recommend joining every group out there. It gets confusing, and some of them just aren't that healthy, to be honest. It keeps us in the toxicity of the narcissistic abuse my goal is to help you out of that speaking of which the event next week if you're not signing up or if you haven't signed up or you just click the i'm going to the trauma bond healing please do sign up click the link go to the landing page and sign up there because it is a live event on zoom so again, my focus is to bring you tips and tools to help break the bond, the trauma bond, and the victimhood and, and the toxicness of it all. So be careful about other groups because they're not, uh, like I said, they're just not always great for helping us to move forward. We don't want to stay stuck. Um, so that's my tip on that, uh, to be cautious there. Also, um, I'm going to start addressing more and more videos with the comments that I'm getting, either as women join the group and they're filling out, you know, the questions in there, the Q&A as they join, or people who just randomly ask me a question I want to address those to help give you some insight um, yes Ashley I hear you I really hear you um, and that's what I want to help you out of is pulling yourself out of the hatred and the blame you know because again we don't want to be somewhere where we're like yeah that's terrible and just, I don't know, keep perpetuating it. Um, I mean, I can explain it all. You know, we talk about 
the trauma going all the way back. None of it is our fault. It's none of it is our fault. The only thing we can do is to empower ourselves to heal and move forward. So, you know, the blaming, uh, we have to stop blaming ourselves because if we keep blaming it just, again, it just keeps going around in a vicious circle. Um, you are not at fault. Um, and the narcissist, um, my goal is to end narcissistic abuse through self-healing so we don't allow, you know, when we feel bad about ourselves, here's the problem. We run the risk of being sucked back in again over and over. Because if we feel bad about ourselves, if we're feeling guilty, if we're feeling blame, then, you know, the narcissist comes along with the love bombing and the idealization and it helps us feel better. And of course, they tell us how great we are. I remember mine, you know, it was, oh, you've got great legs and a great smile and, oh yeah, he's probably right about that, I guess. And they use that as a manipulation tactic because we don't feel good about ourselves. And that's why we need to start looking in the mirror, you know, and various other ways to tell ourselves, you know, you're a survivor, you're, you're awesome, you're strong. I got a new one today. I'm a very powerful woman and I like that about myself. So start saying that, I'm a very powerful woman and I like that about myself. And you're powerful because you're a survivor. You're still here. You made it through. The fact that you function today at all is a testament to what you've been through. So you've got to start patting yourself on the back. And I would like us to help, you know, for each other to pat each other on the back, you know, and to say, positive, supportive things, but we also need to do it with ourselves because again, if we don't, then we just, we run that risk of getting sucked in again by somebody who starts out with this whole idealization crap. <laughs> and by the way, someone was saying to me, um, well, what if I'm the narcissist and really worried that they were the narcissist and I'm thinking that's because the narcissist said so. Well, you're a narcissist, it's not me. But look at that this way. If that's something that's gone through your mind, a narcissist doesn't believe that there's anything wrong with them, which is why they never get healing, because they need healing, because they're the biggest basket case of all. They have, they should win the award of being the number one basket case out there. So, <laughs> if you feel like, or they're telling you, or they've told you in the past that you're the narcissist and you feel bad, and maybe you're blaming yourself, if you feel that way, you're not a narcissist because you wouldn't feel that way if you were. Does that make sense? You think, there's nothing wrong with me. You know, I'm fine. I'm perfect. I don't need help. My ex was a therapist. Oh, I've done all the work on myself and I have a PhD. So what? You're still a basket case if, you know, you're behaving this way because his whole cycle is idealized, devalued, discard in his vicious attempt to keep covering up his pain and misery that he's never healed. So they will not admit that they have a problem that's why they never get help. And that's why, you know, normally in society, we look at them and we think, well, how can we end narcissistic abuse? I guess it's impossible because they'll never fix themselves. Oh no, my friend, it's not about them. Let's just cut them completely out of the equation because it's useless to even focus on them. It doesn't get us anywhere. It just leaves us miserable. We waste a huge amount of energy putting our focus into them 
so we have to just cut the cord which we're going to be doing um in the event i'm going to have i said this the other day but a couple of tapered candles that are connected at the wick if you want to get those yourself you can join with me uh, otherwise just visualize with me um you're so welcome ashley and you said absolutely agree i'm not totally sure which part you agreed with um but <laughs> Uh, thank you for your support, and I'm secure. I'm curious to know what you absolutely agree with. But see, I'm I'm so in this healing mode of wanting to help, you know, drift you and offer healing tools, and that's why I do the meditation every Wednesday because it helps with healing. But I feel I need to really get into the nitty gritty and talk about being in the soup of it all and the the pit of it all because that's how I felt anyway like I was stuck in this pit and relate to you know your questions and do more Q&A's and address things that you're saying and things you're concerned about because unfortunately after we do healing work and years later we can look back and almost forget what it's like we've been there but it's awesome when we can move on. I would still like to kick mine in the you know what, because um, he's still out there working with vulnerable people. It's part of the letting go process though, right? <laughs> we have to let go. Um, so yeah, Ashley, if you're there, let me know, A ask anything um, that I can help with where you're struggling right now, because if I can get that feedback, then I can offer tips for you. And like I said, there were tips. Uh, there are tips that I've, I've been making a list. I've actually typed this up. I've got a long list of questions or problems or issues people have been mentioning as they're joining the group. So feel free to um, yeah, support each other and ourselves lift each other up um you know say something positive and we don't want to uh stay stuck in the poor baby victim mode but really congratulate each other on the powerful souls that we are that's why i say beautiful soul you have a soul you know energy if you want to look at it scientifically, it's energy. We are energy. These bodies don't function without this energy. Yes, Ashley, I, the way I described it myself was I felt like I'd been shoved into a deep, dark pit and being left to crawl out on my own, totally exhausted. And I'm here to lend that helping hand if you're willing to put your hand out. You know, it's kind of like that person who I was thinking about on the Titanic, if you ever saw the movie, where she is hanging on for dear life, you know, to the end of the ship. And Leonardo DiCaprio is like, just give me your hand and I'll pull you up, you know. So I'm here to lend a hand because I know what it's like to be in that pit. And it's like you, you're, you get so drained by them that, you know, uh, it's hard to have the energy to pull ourselves up because they're just so draining. And of course, we talk about getting away from them, going no contact, because they just keep, if we stay around them, they will keep sucking our energy. And it's kind of hard to get the energy back if it keeps getting drained out again. You know, put it, it's exhausting. So, you know, that's the first thing. Um, so, yes, ask questions. Feel free to ask questions. I will give you advice. I will give tips. And like I said, I wanted to address the other group's situation because sometimes they just keep swirling in the mess that they're in and they're not lifting themselves, if that makes sense. And I, I think they just stay that. And I've, I, when I was going for it and I was looking for more support, I um, left those groups. And I started my own. 
Um, anyway, that was a few years ago, but I'm back with the strength that I need and the strength that you need to have someone who is supportive and who's been there. That's the tricky part. If somebody's been there, if they haven't done their own healing, they don't have the energy or the strength to help others out because it's like, you know, you're too stuck in your own trauma that, you know, the residual trauma that hasn't been healed. So do, um, do you know that, you know, a mentor who's done the healing work is needed or they're not going to be able to do it? I wonder if why there's not a lot of people who do do it because you have to really work on yourself to get to the point to help others. Not to pat myself on the back, but I think it's needed. I think we all need a pat on the back. I want to pat. Consider that I'm sending you a virtual pat on the back because you have survived. You're here, and the fact that you're reaching out for support is an awesome step. Give yourself a standing ovation. And these are the things that I want to say to lift you up and as we need to lift each other up, positive words of affirmation, of support, of, what did I say? I'm, I'm a very powerful woman and I like that about myself. I have to memorize that one. So this comes from a woman, another speaker who was just speaking at the UN and, you know, about the abuse women have taken. Well, not just abuse, but the way that we've had to be in society. You know, we're supposed to look beautiful and we're not supposed to say certain things and we're supposed to be in our place. And uh, it was interesting what she was talking about, but we have to not care anymore about what other people think. The problem we get into is many of us, and I would be willing to bet that 100% of us are empaths, which I've written about this over and over, empaths and how we are sensitive to others. And this is why we get into a place of feeling bad, because we feel. We are very feeling people. We are very sensitive people. And we take on other people's emotions and we need i'm going to give you a tip right now we need to have we need to protect ourselves and part of being empowered is putting up that barrier to other crap out there self-preservation you've got to preserve your energy as an empath we can get drained picking up on other people's anger other people's depression other people's emotion so i want you to visualize i think i did this recently but visualize like a healing golden white light around you of protection i always do these visualizations because that's where our power is is that visual part of our mind and that's why i'm doing that free event is to provide something that's symbolic that's visual um but around that golden white healing light that's surrounding you imagine it's covered with a layer of mirrors kind of like a um a suit of armor with mirrors facing outward so i want you to imagine deflecting the negative stuff from others, even if you're just feeling it, whether it's their words, whether it's their actions, or whether it's just the vibes, right? We pick up on the vibes, us empaths. Oh, thanks, Ashley. I want you to pat yourself on the back. Um, now, I want you to say that, I don't know about the un unawakened part, but how could you, because you're saying I'm super sensitive and unawakened and uneducated, how could you turn those words around? Sensitive, that's fine. Unawakened and uneducated, how could you turn those words around to positive words about yourself? 
What would you say about yourself that would be positive? What if you're wise? Being wise doesn't require an education. If you're talking about college or school, being wise is the classroom of life. Okay? So, um, yeah, it's hard to tell your emotions apart from other people. So how can you replace the words unawakened, uneducated with something positive? Really tap into what's positive about you. And like I said, you can be a wise woman. In fact, there's a company called Wise Woman Herbals that I really like. They sell stuff for women, for like um, women who are having energy problems, women who are having... Um, uh, menopause, I couldn't spit out the word, stuff like that. But anyway, we can be wise. We don't need a PhD to be wise. We can be wise from the classroom of life. And the worst things we go through, a lot of times, the more wise we are. What did you learn when things were easy? I don't think anybody gets out for free okay without ever having any kind of trauma but those of us who go through this spiritual journey of trauma there's a reason i there's a reason i definitely believe there's a reason because it makes us more wise we just don't learn when things are easy you know so yes try that visual Ashley, every day, like when you get up in the morning, maybe even before you get out of bed or when you're brushing your teeth, turn it into a habit. It can take a couple weeks to make a habit, maybe three weeks, whatever. But do a visual of protection. You've got to protect your energy because if you don't, it's just going to keep getting drained. Even if you're, you know, simply an empath and you're out in society. I'm on a mountain at 8,000 feet with the animals. I kind of like being away from too many people because it can get draining. But we should be able to learn how to protect our energy as well, you know, because we can't avoid being around people. It's just the way it is. You know, we have to go to the store. Well, we could order everything online. But somehow, you know, we have to um, deal with people. And how... If you are an empath, which most likely you are, you are, how can you use your sensitive gifts in a positive way? Of course, there's so many intuitives out there, and I use my intuition. You may notice when, when I do a healing meditation, my eyes are usually closed. I can't help it. It's because I'm tapping into my intuition. So I'm leading you on an intuitive journey of healing and that's why I do this regularly regularly just to help you out I'm getting tired it's getting late in the day um so Ashley how would you change the unawakened and uneducated words wide awake and wise I could say that you are wide awake and wise Turn the U to a D. Let's add another to that, right? The U unawakened to a W. Wide awake and wise. That's what I would say. Um, we become what we think about, you know, and we keep focusing on negative words. We become that or we stay stuck in it one way or another. So our words are... What's the saying? I know there's many terms for this about words. Um, thoughts are things. That's another one. Thoughts are things. So how can you turn those negative thoughts into positive thoughts? It's honestly, it and this is why I post about gratitude. Um, do you practice gratitude? It's a great way to shift our focus because it's so easy to see the glass as half empty. 
I admit, life is a challenge, you know, and we can sit there and go, ah, oh, it's cold. I mean, I'm at 8,000 feet where it gets, it's still cold, okay? And I can get caught up in, oh my gosh, it's so cold. My feet are cold. My hand, I'm tired of the cold. I mean, winter's almost over. Stick a fork in me, right? <laughs> but I have to turn my own mindset around and go, okay, look at the sunlight on the mountain. It's gorgeous, right? We have to turn it around because we'll make ourselves depressed. We'll make ourselves sick, cause all sorts of problems when we stay in that negative thinking mode. So how can you change your words, your statements, your thoughts? into something positive turn it around somehow um i have journals i have journals this journal has horses because i like horses um my horse passed away last year but anyway this one is re i got this one on etsy like you can replace the inside of this how cool is that and it has a couple pockets for pens so somebody on etsy made this my cat's been, uh, I think, laying on it, so I have to defer it. But we can take one of these, and again, you can replace this. And if you have kids, you know, you can leave a legacy. If you keep a gratitude journal uh, and daily, and you're writing down, you know, things that are positive in your life, um, things that, you know, three things a day that you're grateful for. Hopefully it's not too simple, like I'm breathing, but, you know, trying to get a little more specific and, you know, keep a list. Writing it down, it helps to shift our thinking. And again, we have to like, we have to create a new habit because we get in these mental habits. And I did this too because we had... Like I said, it was kind of a rough winter. I think it was an El Nino thing. And we had a lot of snow. We got really hammered in January. Both our vehicles got stuck in the snow. And it was very frustrating. <laughs> and my husband and I were like, Ew. can we just strangle each other now? Because, you know, it was just, I got in a negative vibes mode. And I was like, okay, I need to turn this around. And I had to every day, we need to do this daily. This is not a once a year practice, but either journaling what we're grateful for, closing our eyes, get into the feeling of it. That's the big part. So we can say, yeah, 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 I'm happy that I have a roof over my head, but we're not feeling it. So we really want to get into the feeling feeling of it because that's where the difference happens get yourself excited put on some music that gets you pumped right music that puts you in a positive mindset something that's rah 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 you know happy music and start writing about yeah i'm grateful for this and that we have to work on this because as humans we will look for excuses to be negative and then we just make ourselves like i say sick depressed miserable we make everybody else miserable but life is too short to be miserable i hope i'm making sense here um i uh you know want to pop in here with various thoughts that were going through my head and i want to pop in more regularly with various thoughts that are going through my head because I can turn into an introvert. It took me years just to be able to go live on Facebook. Okay, so I'm a sensitive, I'm an introvert, um, but when I have something to say, I'm going to say it, and I'm going to start going through more of my notes on where people are struggling in the group and talk about these topics to help you. Because I guess to me, it's like I can look at it and go, I remember those days, but I want to really dive into where you're at right now, where you're at right now, where you need help, how I can 
help to shift things for you so that you don't stay stuck where you are. So I hope these various thoughts have helped you, um, helped you on your journey. And, you know, I threw in a tool in there, which I probably mentioned before, but we can't say it enough. A couple tools, the gratitude tool, talking about mindset, talking about protecting our energy. There's so much we can do to help ourselves feel better, but we need to create a habit. It needs to be every day because I've fallen off the wagon myself. You know, I've learned the hard way. It's like, okay, I'm going down the tubes. It's getting negative now. <laughs> and that happens also when I'm tired. Um, wide awake and wise. Yeah, something like that. I mean, you can change it, Ashley, however suits you. But, ugh, that word uneducated. You know, there's so many people in this world who never got through school, you know, who are like, what is that quote? So, here I want to share something. Um, Sir Richard Branson. Do you know who Sir Richard Branson is? I say sir, but Richard Branson owns Virgin uh, Virgin Airlines. Um, he owns, I don't know how many companies. He's like one of the wealthiest men in the world. Um, I want to share this with you. Hopefully you're still with me, Ashley. Uh, quote. There's one of his quotes that I really love because it just goes to show. Um, and I know it's here somewhere. <laughs> um, was it Thomas Edison who came up with the light bulb? I'm not sure if he finished school. Um, I know it's here. I'm going to find it. I have to find it. Um, oops. Bear with me. I had it saved in my phone at one point. You know, some of these people, you just... Um, so here's what Richard Branson said, who is a multi, probably billionaire with many companies. He said, I was dyslexic. I had no understanding of schoolwork whatsoever. I certainly would have failed IQ tests, and it was one of the reasons I left school when I was 15 years old. And if I'm not understanding something, I don't grasp it. So look up Richard Branson and the words grasp it, for example, and you can find where he's talking about that. Um, so he had no understanding of schoolwork. He wasn't grasping any of it, but he's a genius um, in business, you know. There's many others out there like him who have accomplished so many amazing things. So uh, my narcissist ex had a PhD and all these other letters after his name, but he was a complete idiot, quite frankly. So it doesn't matter, really. I mean, good for you if you do have a PhD. Um, I swear there's something in here about Thomas Edison education. But I could be thinking of someone else. So education, you know, education. Okay, here it is. Edison had very little formal education as a child attending school only for a few months. He was taught reading, writing, and arithmetic by his mother, but was always a curious child and taught himself much by reading on his own. So he wasn't even educated, really. Um, and the light bulb. Well, that's a pretty darn good invention, isn't it? So we have to give our selves credit 
Oh, well, thank you, Ashley. The horse, yeah, my poor, my horse had laminitis. Uh, finally had to put him down, but that's another story. Uh, I like to rescue animals and do what I can. And yes, the journal. Yeah, you can go on Etsy, like I say, and what's cool about that one is you can replace the inside. You know, it's just got one of those paper, like the black and white cover journal thing. And I thought that was cool because then I could just keep reusing it, you know. But um, you can find journals. That, they have a tendency to have journals with, like, positive words on them. I posted a picture of a Starbucks mug the other day that said beautiful on it. And my that was the one I picked out. My mother-in-law said, pick out a Starbucks mug because she likes to collect these Starbucks tumblers. I'm like, okay, fine. And she's like 86. But anyway, um, so I picked out one with a positive word. So wherever you do and when you're buying things, when you're doing things, go for the positive. Um, yes, I understand being an introvert too, Ashley. Like I said, it took me, I used to not even be able to go live on Facebook. It took me years of work to do that. But I have an important message that I want to share to help you to know how powerful and amazing you are. So turn those words around. Find a journal that says, I'm amazing on it, or whatever. Whatever you do, somebody had, how did I, I can't, anyway. Someone had this free thing. I think my husband came home full with it because he works at a school. And I think a teacher gave him this heart. Like they were giving these hearts out. I can't take it off. It's hanging from my lamp. But it says, never forget the difference you make. Right next to it is another thing hanging that says gratitude on it. So whether you have to write it down and put it on a sticky note, what I said, I am very powerful. I'm a very powerful woman, and I like that about myself. Write it on a sticky note. Put it on your mirror. If you're crafty, make something. I want you to get into using positive language everywhere. Thoughts are things. Words are things. And it's a nice little pat on the back. Ask your friends what they love about you. Now, I have, for example, this is an interesting, this is an old vase, vase, whatever you want to call it. It's called a head vase. And I've forgotten about this. But this has things that former clients have said about me <laughs> that they love. Um... It's just, and I've forgotten about it. I was like, oh, that's cool. So ask friends, what do they like about you? Write it down. Put it in a vase. Put it in a box. Uh, I've got a wooden box over there. Um, thank you so much. You're a beautiful woman, and I totally respect you. This was a comment from somebody I've worked with before. Um... They're like hiding in here. I've completely forgot I did this exercise. Thank you for the healing session. I really enjoyed it and needed it. Your group is a reminder to stop thinking of them and start focusing more on me. I appreciate you. In fact, this person just liked one of my posts today. Um, that was a great way to start the week. Thank you. I probably did a meditation or something. So ask others for, you know, their testimonials about you as a human being. And sometimes, you know, you may be shocked or surprised. Sorry, I'm just trying to get that back over. <laughs> you may be shocked and surprised because if you're so used to thinking of yourself in a negative way, it's like, really? You, you think, somebody said, another intuitive said to me earlier today of uh, my mother who passed away. She goes, your mother's so proud of you. And I'm like, really? Cuck up. 
and we don't like to, we automatically put ourselves down or make ourselves small, right? We have to shrink because we're not supposed to shine our light. What did Marianne Williamson say? Here we go with more quotes. Are you familiar with the Marianne Williamson quote? Ugh. It's about shining your light. Um, and I'm mean, going to have to find that one now, too, because it's going to bug me. <clears throat> so look up this quote by Marianne Williamson. M-A, how do we say that? M-A-R-I-A-N-N-E, if you're not familiar with it. See, I'm, the thing is, like I say, I am been in the healing world for years and I'm just so used to like knowing all this stuff and like other healers knowing this stuff and I forget that some someone else might not know this but this is a famous quote that she said sometimes it gets attributed to other people but I believe this was yes this was from her book a return to love she says our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us. It's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So imagine how empowering yourself, seeing yourself as the goddess you are, and how that can impact others in your life. Shining your light, being a beacon, being that lighthouse for others, right? So dimming ourselves doesn't help anybody. So practice shining your light. Practice stepping into your power, which is really believing in yourself. And start writing these affirmations. Start writing... If you have to ask somebody else, like I said, because we don't, we just don't see these qualities in ourselves that other people see in us. We just keep dimming our light. And that just makes us feel terrible. It makes us sick. It makes us depressed. It makes us sad because we are powerful. You are powerful. You're here for a purpose. And part of my work is take women through healing. We heal the trauma bond. We love ourselves. And we get into who am I really? What's, who am I at my core? What are my core values? Where do I see myself going? And think of how you can impact the world in a positive way when you get into your power. So being in any kind of victim mode and not being, not rescuing yourself, whoever watching, listening, I'm not accusing anybody. This is, I'm saying all this with vast, deep love for everyone out there who's been through this. No, oh, thank you, Ashley. Um, I'm doing this work out of love and out of empathy because I know what it's like. And I think, wow, what a terrible thing this is to go through. 
an awful experience, you know, the narcissist, narcissistic abuse to happen to us beautiful souls. But we don't want to, we don't want to stay sorry for ourselves because that's just going to keep us in the pit, right? And that's what I said about certain other groups. What I saw instead of getting the support that I wanted was, you know, everybody's just wallowing in the pit of despair. I want to help you to become empowered because it's the only way that's going to turn things around. Heal the trauma bond and for you to step into your power and do, be effective in the world with your gifts. Gifts can be anything. And again, you don't need an education to have a gift, a talent, an ability. In fact, I want to ask you, what are some gifts that you have? What are things that you're good at? What do you excel at? Are you creative? A lot of times us sensitives are creative people. We like to paint. We like to make things. We like to express ourselves. And I have to say, here's another tip. I got into chocolate making because I'm creative. Sometimes I like to cook. It comes out for us in different ways, doesn't it? My niece, who's really creative, made an interesting throw blanket thing and shipped it to me. So, you know, we all have things we like to do. Um, I have a friend who's making these teddy bear, they're memory bears, and she takes like a shirt or some piece of, or some type of clothing from somebody who's passed away. She makes these cute little bears and she'll like stitch the name of the person who's passed on it, not to be all sad, but I thought, wow, that's a really cool gift, you know? She's so good at that stuff. What are you good at that's creative that's therapeutic as well. I mean, it can help you heal. You know, you can share it with others. Um, anyway, the tips are never ending here. So <laughs> I'm gonna be doing this more often. I'm just wanna pop in with more tips and, um, but get started with some of those suggestions that I've made and let me know how it's working for you. I'm sound, sounding like Dr. Phil now. How's that working for you? Um, again, I a lot of times I express myself through writing as well. And that's why sometimes, you know, I'm posting blog posts, writing on Medium, putting it in the group, um, just things that come to me to help you um, and to certainly validate where you're at and how much it can really be terrible and disgusting and whatever. But... We got to switch it to the positive side and so we can come out of the darkness. Does that make sense? I want you to come out of the darkness and into the light because there is light for you. And the more we can do this, the more we can get in the light, we can shine our light with others and let's all be here with positive support. Okay. So hopefully... Um, and this has been a while, but it's almost an hour, I think, but hopefully if you've enjoyed some of the tips that I've shared today, some of my thoughts, and would love to know your thoughts in the comments if you haven't shared them already. So thank you, Ashley, for joining me. I will be back and again, sign up for the free event on the link, uh, in the event page. Also, I have a complimentary clarity call if you are considering getting help, if you want to learn more about getting help. Book a call with me. You can either book it on my link. I can share that in the comments or message me, whatever works. Um, I had written down called it a narc call, N-A-R-C, but I'm turning that word around, narc, uh, obviously an abbrevi abbreviation for narcissist, but I've turned it around to now aligned, renewed, and confident. So now aligned, renewed, and confident. 
So that's what I want for you, is to turn that word around. So what words in your life that are like lacking power, that are maybe really negative, that you can change and turn into a positive? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, guess I should sign off for today, but I'll be back. And I hope you enjoyed our little talk. Sometimes I just feel like I'm talking to myself, but if that's what it takes, that's what I'll do. <laughs> so anyway, thanks again for joining me. Have a great rest of your day or night or morning, wherever you are. And I'll be popping in again soon. Bye for now.